Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Beowulf, back at with another video. Um, I've been seeing some comments in the videos, you guys want to see how to do some maintenance stuff. Well, right now, I'm going to do the oil change on my 2018 RXTX 300. I think I'm about like 33 or 36 hours, one of the two. Now the manufacturer claims at 100 hours is when you should change the oil. During the period of miles I've been in, so far I've had to add oil because you've burned oil when you're out there riding the jet ski. Um, from day one I'd have to say, maybe around 10, 12 hours, the oil started looking really dark and I don't believe in waiting to 100 hours to change the oil. It's kind of even with me adding it, it turns a little light brown and then it gets really kind of like it looks dirty. Um, so right now I'm going to get everything prepped. I've already taken off the front both the seats. We have to take this whole lid thing off here. So I'm going to show you guys how to change the oil on a 2018 RXT X300 Sea-Doo. Um, some stuff I bought to get ready to do the process. This little pump right here I got uh, pumps out the oil. There's smaller ones you can find in the market. So I bought this from Revo Racing. Um, they have a smaller one, um, but I want the bigger one. Uh, just because I got two jet skis and I, you know, this is kind of more of like a, sh uh, if you're a, a shop, you're working on jet skis, from what I've read about it, but uh, HT Moto, you can use this on, you know, any type, of, you can even use it on a car, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, I think you should just go, you know, change it normal, but a uh, jet ski, you got to pump the oil out, there's not like a car where you drain it from the bottom, it's all from the top, and even the oil filters in the top, so kind of everything you know about cars change oil, a jet ski is a completely opposite thing. So, um, let me remove all this stuff and I'll pump out the oil, change out the oil filter, um, I'm going to be doing a spark plug change too, I know I went to the local... Uh, sea dealer to buy spark plugs, but they're out of stock of them. They're supposed to come later on this week, so I'll do another video on how to install spark plug plugs. Because I recommend you probably should do all at once. Um, just because, you know, this is a performance vehicle. Um, you want to make sure it's running the peak of what it can do at all times, not kind of slacking and doing stuff. So, let's get the video rolling. Um, also too, I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos, so they're not going to be all posted at the same time. Uh, but I got some performance parts from Revo Racing that I'm installing all today. So this whole day is going to be a long install video of doing a bunch of things one after another. So the first one I'm going to do is the process of oil change, and there's a whole other list of stuff. So stay tuned to future videos. Make sure you guys subscribe. There's tons of stuff going on with my RXTX and my RXPX that's behind there. Um, so let's get it going of removing all these pieces and getting this oil changed. All right, so the first thing you got to do before you take this off is, um, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, ten of these uh, Starkey's bolts you have to take out. Um, I use, let's see, a T30. And then for the front two, you need to have, let's see what size this is. Ten or wrench, because um, there's a nut and wash underneath. So you got to be careful when you hold it, and you just loosen these, and then boom, they just start moving. They will not turn if you don't have the wrench to do it. And also, too, is when you remove these, the front ones here are longer than the rest of the um, bolts with the star key. So I suggest putting those in a separate pile so you don't use them on another one and then kind of mess up. Pretty much the start of any type of working on the engine or checking on stuff, you have to remove this. So just to be in a routine, it looks so awesome when you fully open it up. But see, it's just a, a nut and washer. Um, what I would kind of do too is go in a pattern, open these. I wouldn't fully pull this one out. I would go in a pattern like this way, that way, that way, that way, kind of cornering and backing up, kind of like how you tighten down a lug nuts on a car. You go opposite ends. Um, I would kind of loosen them all. And the same as when you re-tighten it. Because um, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole video how to put this all back on. Um, it's kind of just 
redo what you just saw. Um, but also too, wait, take a bet. There's more than 10. There's 13. So there's some hiding. That's where the posts would come out if you were putting a, a tow thing for towing like a tube or whatnot. So I put them in all in a pile when you get them. Um, so this is kind of what you gotta do. I'm gonna fast forward to the future part because it's gonna get kind of boring seeing me loosen all these, but they're all visible. I would also suggest if you have the uh, line cue, pull them up. Uh, if they're down, they will drop down, especially when you put it back up. It's better to have those pulled up, otherwise they won't kind of sit in there right. Um, and then what also too is when you reinstall it, I would st start putting all these bolts, bolts to slip in. I would start these, I wouldn't tighten them, and I would just kind of put all of them in there and then gradually, I wouldn't tighten one all the way down, it's tighten little, little, little all around and then kind of do that reverse pattern with doing them uh, to tighten them back down. Uh, I don't know off of the head what the torque spec is on this, I would look it up. I don't tighten them like as tight as they can go because you know you're going into fiberglass so don't tighten them till like they're going to break. Just make sure they're kind of snug and just keep an eye on them I guess. Don't have them loose but don't over tighten anything I can tell you that much. Um, but make sure it's not loose and always check and stuff. This is kind of like a normal maintenance if you were going to go out jet skiing I would check all this before I would go every time. You know you got to check the oil. Also too when you want to check the oil I already checked it but that I'm adding oil in. Um, do an oil change. You don't want to run this jet ski without the, um, there's a line you hook back to run water through it. You can buy it at the sea Do dealer. Do not run this um, with no water running through it. And don't let it run it for a long time. It, it, if you bought one of these new or used, it had to come with DVD and they'll tell you how long to run it to do this process. Um, but make sure you guys do that. Do not cold start it without having water running through it. And don't have the water running before you start it too. That's a big no-no. Um, and that's also too, every time before riding, I always do that too, is run some water, start it up, check the oil level, but make sure it's on level ground. My driveway kind of goes downhill, so it's, I obviously would do it on the, I would run it to warm up the engine, run it for like 30, 40, 60 seconds, and then go out to the street and then check the engine oil level where it's on level ground. Um, before I go riding to make sure if your oil level is low or whatnot, make sure it's all correct. Um, it's kind of cool to learn how to do this yourself, the oil, because this is little routines you should be checking all the time and you can't run to the dealer for every single thing for maintenance. I know a lot of dealers that are by me, they do an oil change, it's three weeks. Three weeks to have your jet ski sit in there to the oil change. Who has the time to be doing that? I'm not saying never to go to a dealer, but to me, myself, I like to ride and I, every free time I get, I want to go riding. Three weeks is way too long for me to, to not ride, just for an oil change. Um, if you just, some people just don't, like my brother, he is not mechanically inclined and if I had him do this, he wouldn't know how to do it. He can't do it, so obviously he would have to go to the dealer to get installed. Not everybody knows everything about how to work on things, I'm lucky I kind of know but some people aren't. So if you're not really familiar, I would not recommend doing this. If you've done stuff like this before, do it. But if you haven't, I, this jet ski is a lot of money to be like trying to learn on it. Um, it's all to what your skill level is, what you think you can handle. So that's just a warning or just kind of telling you. So, all right, let's get it going. I'll move all this and I'll show you what it looks like with it all popped out. All right, so pull this out. Slips right out. There we go. Move this somewhere else. That's not in the way. Now check this out. If anybody, let me move the camera over a tad. There she is. A lot of room in there. A lot of room. Now, if a lot of people aren't aware, this is where you have to pull your oil filter out right there. So I went to the store because these use. Uh, female and star keys, sockets. I found this at AutoZone. I was searching late last night. All those things were closed. I went to like a Sears. They had a guy had no clue what I was talking about. I went to Lowe's. They had no clue what I was talking about. And I went right to AutoZone and they did have these. So, and also too, Lowe's was selling something similar like this for like 60 bucks and this was 20 bucks. So um, this is what I need to pull all this off, especially in future videos what I'm shooting today with other mods that are coming. You need these keys. If you don't have the star, female ends, you really can't do much with this. So 
Make sure you pick these up if you haven't already. So I've already opened up the oil cap. Dipstick's already out. Now I'll show you guys, this is what's crazy. This is at like 33, 36 hours. It's pretty dirty. Um, that's why I'm changing it early. So got that out. Now what you'll do is this is the end. You want to take this, put this right down into the dipstick as far as it can go down. You don't want to force it down, but see, look at it. It's kind of stopped. It's down in the crank crankcase. Um, I like this one because otherwise you'd have to have one rested up here. Nice thing is you can put your foot. It's kind of another reason. There's a, a place too where I can bring the oil to, and I thought this was a lot easier hauling it. Um, you just start pumping. Look how dirty that is coming out. Pretty dirty. That's why I recommend you guys not waiting to the dealer staying 100 hours, but every jet ski might be different. I ride a lot. So I think in the future, I'm gonna be changing my oil a lot more frequent, uh, probably in 100 hours, do it at least four to five times. Uh, and just. You know, the hard thing with one of these, any of these kind of things to take the oil out, you can't get all the oil out. So you kind of want to change it a lot, just so you don't have any of this gummy stuff just staking, staying in the, uh, the engine. This should take about like 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to get pumping at this so I have both hands. And then once it's done, I'll show you guys how much it fills up. Okay, that sound, that's kind of where it's showing. It's getting kind of the bottom of the crankcase, getting the oil out. So this is like 20 minutes. You can kind of see at the bottom. Uh, a fair amount of oil. So it's nearly filled one of those. I don't know what the measurements are. They don't really have any markings. That's why I kind of got this, so you just have more. And I have a recycling area where they can bring the oil. Um, but you can see it's making that noise. So it's nearly to it. I kind of been like pumping a little bit and letting it sit. You just don't want to fidget pulling this out because it's at the bottom. I'm going to pull it out a little bit and make sure I get everything out of there. But it's just a, you do a lot of pumping and let it sit and then just kind of gravity pulls it out and puts it down in there. It's pretty neat. All right, so what I'm going to do, because the oil was really dirty in there, I had this open from passing where I added. And it's almost full, but what I'm going to do is add it in there and then pump that out just to make sure all that really dirty oil is out of there because I don't want to just do all this and then it's still dirty a tad. So this is what I recommend. Maybe some people wouldn't think this is the way to do it, but I'm going to do this to make sure it is fully cleaned out. Um, so let's see what it looks like when I pump it out. It's a little bit cleaner looking. See how, was, see how it was right? So it is still, see how it's still, so I just added like a cord in there and you see it's still pumping out. Let's see what we got. Gave it a little time to sit down to get down into the crankcase. All right, to remove the oil cap, this is an E10 uh, star female socket, female end socket. So, and I probably need both hands to do this. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. It's really hard to film this, and when I don't have a guy hold the camera, I'm doing it all. So, I'm going to start loosening this, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I pull it out. All right, so I got the oil filter pulled out. And then this is what it looks like. Let's see. With it pulled out. See right down in there. So I'm gonna try to stick that thing down there too and see if I can pump out anything more oil. See, it looks kind of dirty in there. I'm gonna take a rag, clean in there real good too. So you can give a good yank and the oil filter comes right off. Um, you can see it's pretty dark in there. Um, I cleaned up really well inside. I don't know if you can see. It's all cleaned out. And then check out this. This is this is where the oil filter was when I cleaned in there. Check how dirty these are. That's my dog Leo. It's pretty dirty. Um, so I think these guys should change the oil a lot more frequent. But yeah, man, it's so cool how these are matching colors. So with this, 
So with this, there are these two uh, O-rings. You'll have to replace those. Um, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit before I do that and then slip those on. All right, so what you wanna do is start with the first one. I would first suggest trying to move this with your fingers, not with a tool. I'm pretty positive I can get a good yank. I'm guessing I'm not wanting to slip. Let me get something to try to get it pried. All right, so I got both of those off. I'm gonna go grab the new ones and slip them on. Got them right here, Let's see if you guys can see. So I'm gonna first slip on the smaller one. If I can do it, and obviously I can. So you gotta do this one. This one's the easiest out of all of them. Let's slip that on. All right, now I just gotta get this one. All right, so I got that on. Let me go get the oil filter. Slip the oil filter in, got that in. All right, let's go put this sucker back in. All right, got that back on, nice and snug. Don't over tighten, but it's to work. You know, it's snug on there. That's what you wanna do. You don't wanna be like cranking this till stuff breaks. Do one last pump out, if you get any more oil out. Stugging a little bit more. The cord I added earlier. Yep. Still looking a little dark. Sound. All right, guys. So, oil's drained out. Oil filter's replaced. Oh yeah, one other thing too. <laughs> I didn't get about the oil. So I use a uh, XPS lubricants, the uh, 5W40. Um, also too, there's kits that they sell where they already have the pre-kits for doing the oil change. From what I was told the dealer with this newer engine, they don't include the right oil filter for it. So you should buy it all separate. Um, don't buy the full kit because what I've been told is it does not fit. The oil filters are different. So um, just a heads up, figured I'd give you guys some uh, thing. And oh, you should use the factory lubricants anyways. You know, you could do different ones, but it affects the warranty. So. You know, got to keep that warranty, I guess. Three quarts of oil in here. Um, got to put the dipstick back in, but then I'm going to get moving it, doing the other mods. Um, the big thing is what you want to do is the dealer is telling me that you should, they're trying to get me to buy four quarts. I already had some extra quarts of oil at home that I haven't used yet. So I'm going to put three in and the next time I use it, when it's on level ground, I run it. I'm going to see if I need to add any more oil. That's what you guys should do. Right now it's in the garage and I got a list of other mods to do. I don't really want to have the engine all running and hot when I have to do more stuff inside the engine today. Um, so you add the oil, put the cover back on, and that's how you change your oil. And I hope this help, this video helps you guys um, learning how to do some maintenance with your jet ski. Uh, this kind of fits with all sea -Doo's, um, but this one is specifically for the 2018 RXTX 300, baby. <laughs> what? I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions about stuff, just you know, DM me on Instagram. I am underscore Beowulf. Links in the bio. So see you guys in the next video. Take care.